Hello everyone, I'm Monica Reinagel, the Nutrition Diva, here with your quick and dirty tips for eating well and feeling fabulous. And this week, our topic is postbiotics. But first, if you need a break from your hot, crowded gym, check out Elevated Fitness. They let you stream workouts anywhere, anytime, with no equipment required. Their low-intensity interval training workouts are fun, fast, and they're designed to speed up your metabolism, help you sleep better, and give you more energy. You can subscribe at www.elevatedfitness.com. That's E-L-E-V, the number eight, dfitness.com and get your first month free today by entering the promo code DIVA at checkout. Max writes, I've heard you talk about prebiotics and probiotics, but I just came across a reference to postbiotics. What are these and how do they affect our health or nutrition? Well, all three of these terms, prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics have to do with the trillions of bacteria that live and work in our digestive tracts. Understanding the complex interactions between us and our unseen guests has become the leading edge of nutrition and health research. Everything we thought we knew about nutrition, digestion, immunity, and metabolism is now being reevaluated through the lens of the microbiome, Who knew these little critters were so important? Probiotic refers to the bacteria that we get from foods, and sometimes supplements, that are thought to have beneficial effects in the body. The lactobacillus and bifidobacteria that we get from yogurt, for example, are some of the more common types of probiotic bacteria. Now, prebiotics refers to those foods that we consume, which also provide fuel for the bacteria that inhabit our intestines. This fuel is mostly in the form of plant fibers from vegetables, grains, and legumes. We humans lack the enzymes to digest these fibers, so they arrive more or less intact in the large colon. Unlike us, the bacteria living there do have the enzymes to digest them. Eating more of these foods, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes can bolster the health and vitality of your intestinal population. Postbiotics is a relatively new term that's been coined to refer to the metabolic byproducts of those probiotic bacteria. Now, metabolic byproducts is really sort of a cleaned up way of saying waste products, but it just goes to show you that one organism's trash is another organism's treasure because these compounds that the bacteria produce and excrete into our digestive tracts seem to be responsible for many of the beneficial effects of probiotics. As they go about their cellular business, bacteria produce hydrogen peroxide, for example, and this may in turn protect us from salmonella and other pathogenic bacteria or yeasts that might be hanging around in the neighborhood looking for trouble. Short-chain fatty acids are also byproducts of bacterial metabolism. One of these Acetic acid is the substance that gives vinegar its distinctive tang, and this may be one of the ways that a healthy microbiome can promote healthy body weight. When you have more beneficial bacteria, they produce more acetic acid, which helps to regulate your blood sugar levels and also gives your metabolism a modest boost. Butyric acid is another short-chain fatty acid produced by the gut bacteria, and that helps promote colon health by providing an energy source for the colon cells. So what is the future of postbiotic research? We still have a long way to go in understanding how our microbiota influence our health and, conversely, how we can influence our microbiota. But understanding more about these postbiotic compounds may be a big part of the picture. For example, they may make it a lot easier to assess the health of our microbiome and to see how it's responding to our interventions. Instead of having to count and catalog every strain of bacteria present in a subject's gut, many of which aren't really doing anything one way or the other, it might turn out to be a lot simpler and more direct just to measure the presence of these active postbiotic compounds. 
There are even some scientists who are trying to develop a sort of smart toilet paper that would make this easier to do. Researchers have identified some 800 postbiotic compounds so far, and that may sound pretty daunting, but it's actually a lot more manageable than trying to corral the thousand species of bacteria that may reside in the gut. Postbiotics may have direct therapeutic potential as well. Instead of trying to alter the makeup of our intestinal population with food or supplements or even fecal transplants, we might be able to administer these postbiotic compounds directly. Perhaps they would be useful when patients require antibiotics or other microbiome-disrupting therapies. Postbiotics could also be an option for delivering some of the benefits of probiotics to immune-deficient or compromised patients who might not be able to take live probiotic bacteria. But all of this is still largely uncharted territory. In the meantime, is there any way to get more postbiotics? Well, there are some foods that already contain some of these postbiotic compounds. Vinegar, as I mentioned before, is a source of acetic acid. Butter and cheese contain butyric acid. So including these foods in your diet, in moderation of course, can supplement what's being produced by your gut flora. But for now, I think your best bet may be to continue to consume those pre- and probiotic foods on a regular basis, which is going to help keep your microbiome robust and healthy. As more information and research on postbiotics becomes available, I'll be sure to keep you posted. You'll find a transcript of today's episode with links to some of the research I reviewed, as well as links to some of my previous episodes on pre- and postbiotics on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com, where you can also sign up for my newsletter. And you'll find me at nutritionovereasy.com or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. Come say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, Max, for your great question, and I hope you all have a great week.